welcome back to Nerd and Geek University. Today we're going to take it a little bit easy for spoilers, as since yesterday there's only two new spoilers, but be sure to check back later in the day for more spoilers as there's surely more to come. The first card we're going to talk about today is Risen Executioner. It costs two black and two colorless for a 4-3 zombie warrior creature. The Executioner can't block, it gives plus one plus one to all their zombies you control, and you may cast Risen Executioner from your graveyard if you pay one colorless more to cast it for each other creature in your graveyard. In Limited so far, the Executioner is only decent. He doesn't plus himself from his own ability, but we can expect to see more zombies in the set for the same reason. He also can't block, but in Limited that can be an irrelevant handicap if there are other ways to get zombies out to block for him, such as the case with Necromaster Dragon. What really matters in Limited is the fact that you can continuously cast this card from the graveyard, which means even after he dies, if you have enough mana to play him again, he just keeps coming back to keep pressure on your opponent. With Delve being a big mechanic and standard, this will help keep the graveyard full of creatures to make casting this card from the graveyard easier. He synergizes well with cards like Tassiker the Golden Fang and Murderous Cut, both very popular cards and standard at the moment. In Modern, this card is an easy choice for any zombie deck that runs cards like Gravecrawler and Jarrell's Messenger for a loop of returning zombies that have a hard time dying. In a deck like this, if your opponent has no way of exiling your creatures via methods like Path to Exile, your creatures will just continuously come back for more attacks. Atarka's Command is an instant spell with a mana cost of 1 red and 1 green mana. The card gives you a choice of 2 out of 4 options to choose from. The first option is your opponent's can't game life this turn. The second is Atarka's Command deals 3 damage to each opponent. The third is you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. The fourth and last is creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain reach until end of turn. This card has usefulness in early, mid, and late game. In limited play, unless the rest of the cards you pulled are not red and green, this card is a must to put into your deck. The early game, you can place an additional land from your hand and deal three damage to your opponent, which can help put you ahead. In the mid-game, if you have a few creatures in play and want to increase your damage output to your opponent, then you can plus one plus one your creatures until end of turn and deal three damage to your opponent. This card has serious flexibility for limited, and due to its low mana cost, is very easy to put into a deck. Well, that's it for spoilers so far. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's only two new spoilers as of right now, but again, be sure to check back later in the day as there are sure to be more spoilers. What are your guys' thoughts on Dragons of Tarkir? Are there any cards in particular you like or dislike? Leave any thoughts or comments you have below in the comments section. Remember to subscribe, and we will see you next time for more spoilers.